I know that he left them out in the sun to dry when they were shooting Three Godfathers. Yeah. And he said that, well, what did he say? I, he told me things, but I'd rather hear it from you. Welcome to A Word on Western. Today we are fortunate to have the daughter of a dear friend and a great actor, Harry Carey Jr. Could you welcome Melinda Carey? <laughs> hey, Rob. Hi, how are you doing? Good. Have a seat. Thank you. It's even uh, a red doby color. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us how your, your dad got his nickname. Well, my dad got his nickname because he was born in an adobe ranch house out, um, which is now Tesoro Park, out in New Hall, Saugus New Hall. And, um, you know, he came out with this shock of red hair and they called him Doby. So that's, yeah, that's how he got it. When you were growing up, did uh, you ever go to the film locations with him? Yes, actually, what was really fun was going on the back lots. Um, I don't think they let kids on anymore. Well, I think they let them on, but they have to pay now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they call them tours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you had an e-ticket early on, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah. So if we were off school, I could grab a friend and, you know, go to the back lot, Universal and um, Columbia Ranch, and we would just run amok. You what know? movies do you remember? Oh, none. I have no idea. We were just, we were so involved with just, you know, looking at the sets and pretending. We were into ourselves, of course. So <laughs> we were pretending, you know, we'd go through the Western Street and go in and out of the saloons or whatever. But it was really fun. Mm -hmm. Your dad worked so often uh, with John Ford and John Wayne. Did you, as a kid, I know, John Ford just loved children. He did, actually. You have a different way of, uh, yeah. a, a different insight for us then. Yeah, my sister and I were talking about, I was a little afraid of him because of the patch and he, you know, the way he looked. <laughs> but um, he was always very gentle with us, you know, and asked how we were. And um, my sister was remembering, you know, he always said, are you having a good time? And you know, we would spend time with them at the um, field photo farm. But I remember particularly that um, he and Mary came over, Bill drove them. We lived in this little house in Sherman Oaks and um, they arrived with a bunch of Christmas gifts, you know, and it was so sweet. And we all squeezed into our little living room around, you know, um, we used to call him Uncle Jack. Mm -hmm and uh, all these wrapped gifts for us. And yeah, that was just a remarkable morning. I just thought it was amazing. With Duke, I remember I was maybe five. And again, he came to our house. He just grabbed me and put me up on his lap. And I didn't have an idea who he was, really. Just this giant in your living room. <laughs> I just still remember thinking, wow, who is this, you know, his voice, and he was big, and he was really holding me, and it was, it was memorable, yeah. Did your dad ever talk about how Ford tortured him? Oh, Constantly <laughs> talked about how Ford <laughs> tortured him. I know that he left him out in the sun to dry when they were shooting Three Godfathers. Yeah. And he said that, well, what did he say? I, he told me things, but I'd rather hear it from you. Yeah, I mean, he, he did. He, he said that he had, he had tried to die appropriately, and Ford said, oh, you know what he said. Um, bad words, blah, blah, blah. You know, just lay there. And um, yeah, he left him out in Death Valley on that hot <laughs> sand, baking. And, and broke then, for lunch, right? And, yeah, <laughs> and there he was, and um, came back in the result is on the film. I can't, I have a hard time watching that. Mm. Just, you know. Torture. Yeah. Did you go to the locations of any of the films that he did with Ford? No, we weren't allowed, no mm. family. Mm. Um, I, the only time I was ever popular in school though, was uh, <laughs> in the sixth grade. 
I peaked early. Because um, <laughs> uh, I got to go out on the Spin and Marty set. Ooh. That was, that was a that big, was show. A big yeah. deal. That was yeah. a great show. Yeah. And, and so being, that was at the Disney Ranch? Yeah. Is that where they at shot the, that? Uh -huh. So did you ride as a kid too? Well, that was, um, you know, we grew up in Sherman Oaks. So we had a little tract house with a pool and um, no horses. Hmm. But uh, we would go out, you know, occasionally, but not really. Hmm. Well, <laughs> t talk about Spin and Marty then. What do you remember about, uh, about Spin and Marty that your dad did? Well, I remember, here's the thing, when daddy was working, um, all of a sudden, like, we would have uh, a new TV <laughs> or <laughs> the, the refrigerator that needed to be replaced got replaced, you know, because we're talking, I'm like 10 or 11 now. And Spin and Marty was a good gig, you know, that went mm -hmm. on for a while. Yeah. So we actually uh, really upgraded and uh, spent a summer in Malibu. Wow. With Wendell Corey and his family. Mm -hmm. And so they had four kids and we had four kids and we just all played in Malibu, you know, it was just a, just the best. I'll bet. Put on talent shows and stuff. But he was working on Spin and Marty at the time and, mm -hmm. um, and he would go back to the studio and work and, and then come back out and... Uh, that was very popular. Tim Considine and David Stoller. Yeah, it was in Annette and mm -hmm. yeah, Darlene. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Well, probably they had comic books and and everything about. Yeah, that, right? we have a little record of the Triple R song. Can you sing any of it? Way out there on the Triple R, yippee yippee oh, horses are the best by far. <laughs> There's getting to be too many Joneses and Smiths around here to suit me. There's a fellow knows me. Hey, son, Marilyn. You remember John Jones, don't you, Jim? Yes. Oh, sure. Jim's an old friend of mine from Rattlesnake Gulch. I just came over to pay him a visit. How are you, Jim? Well, be seeing you, Sheriff. Your grandfather, Paul Fix, too, was uh, such an influence in John Wayne's life. Paul Fix was such a character. You know, as a grandfather, um, I remember stories that my mother told, you know, as she was growing up, that he did some such wacky things. Um, and he had that tick, you know, that he, when you would talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, he had this odd tick he would do. And um, he would go in for jobs, you know, interviews, and they, they <laughs> can't hire that guy, you know, he goes through these gyra facial gyrations and well, stuff. Well, they offered him the job of the doc on Star Trek, and he said, no, I don't want to be in some outer space thing. He didn't want to wear the tights. <laughs> <laughs> did he ever regret it, do you think? I don't think he did regret it. Hmm. I regretted it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be even more popular. Yeah, 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 no. Well, your mom was so funny. She <clears throat> talked about how dad would love to go in for a part and take his teeth out. And if he got a part where he didn't have to wear his teeth, he'd just gum and he'd yeah, just Yeah, he would play it. old Indians. Yes, and Gray Eagle, he yeah. plays an old Indian yeah. in that, you know? Uh-huh, yeah. Your grandmother, I met her when I first came to town, Olive Carey. Right? Yeah, Ollie. She was a hoot. I, we were up in, uh, yes, um, I guess, Montecito, and Jane Russell came by while we were talking to your grandmother. It was just, Jennifer Holt took us there. Yeah. It was great. What a wonderful lady she was. Yeah, she had such an interesting life, you know, because she, she grew up in Saranac Lake and went to work for D.W. Griffith. And then when he came to Hollywood, she followed him out and started to work at Universal where she met Harry, mm -hmm. uh, Harry Carey, my grandfather. And they homesteaded that property out in Newhall. Um, and Jack Ford lived there with them for Up a time. Up in Newhall. In Newhall. Mm -hmm. They were all just starting out. So we're talking about like 1915, 17, that. Luckily, some of those films have survived. I know uh, Jack Ford's first feature, Straight Shooting, yeah. uh, survived in its entirety, uh, which is very unusual. And it just has all of the themes 
that he used in his films for the rest of his career and had not only Harry Carey, but I think Hood Gibson might have had a small part in uh -huh. that too. Hi, I'm Rob Word, and I'm so glad you joined us today to watch this episode of A Word on Westerns. We have over 250 episodes up, and we've made them for people like you and for me who love Westerns. We're the only regularly scheduled talk show devoted to Westerns. And I want you to watch, comment, and share these episodes if you like them. All you have to do is go to this page right here, click on that, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.